Welcome back, GM Nation. This is your host, GMB Creates, aka GM Reacts. And today we're going to be reacting to Watch Mojo's top 10 horror movies, movie sequels that save the franchise. Top 10 horror movie sequels that save the franchise. Let's get it. Let's go. Oh, the thumbnail has shown it was uh, Michael Myers, and that was a good one. That Halloween one that recently came out, that was a good one. Yes, yeah, sir. But let's go ahead and get into their top 10 Watch Mojo horror sequels. Let's go. I feel like Final Destination is definitely going to be here on, on here. If not, they're definitely Jaws. Or so many different horror movies, bro. Let's get into it. Let's see. In three, two, one. Subscribe. Hi. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 horror movie sequels that redeemed the franchise. This time you're going to lose. My friends call me Chucky. Oh my god, I love it. I've seen it five times and it still gets me every time. For this list, we'll be looking at sequels that brought back a horror movie franchise. We're not so much looking at the best horror sequels as sequels that got their respective franchise back on track. Let us know in the comments what horror sequel you think we should have included on the list. Number 10, Ouija, Origin of Evil. Let's begin. I never watched that one. When Ouija came out in 2014, nobody was impressed by the movie. The consensus being that it was another forgettable horror flick about a supernatural force offing teenagers. Was there something I could have done? This isn't surprising given how hard it is to take a horror movie about a Ouija board seriously. But then a prequel came out in 2016 called Ouija Origin of Evil, and critics and audiences agreed it was much better than its predecessor, something rare with movies in general. What is all the yelling? Look what she did! Did you do this? No, she's lying. No, she's lying. I look, you want to see it now, all right? This was in large part thanks to director Mike Flanagan, whose previous work included Oculus and Hush. Number nine, Curse of Chucky. My friends call me Chucky. You're dead. No, you are. The child's play. Man, I stopped watching Chucky after The Bride of Chucky, bro. There's only a few good Chucky's. Um, the original was the best one, of course. And then the other one where he uh, 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 went to that military camp and like tried to kill that little military boy. Those were the two best ones. The other ones were straight. But I really started to fall off of Chucky as I got older. But it is what it is. Let's give it to Movies me. made Chucky the quintessential evil doll. However, Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky took Chucky in a campy direction, focusing more on gags than on horror. What? No, you, you, you didn't, we didn't. Oh, sweet face, come to mommy. Oh. That's not to say you can't have humor in a Chucky movie, but there's obviously such a thing as too much. The direct-to-video sequel Curse of Chucky is a return to form, bringing Chucky back to being a menacing icon rather than the joke that earlier sequels made him. I'm gonna bend that big finger. Speaking of getting back to basics, Alex Vincent, who played little Andy in the first two Child's Play movies, makes a brief appearance in a post credit scene, ensuring that fans of the series stay tuned for future installments. <gasps> Play with this. Blah! Andy! Number eight, Saw 6. One thing I didn't like about Chucky is I do not like seeing them, those little dolls in real life, bro. Like, I be really thinking them just gonna come in life. And I'm gonna sock it right in their face, like... Give it that one two piece. You did. <laughs> I don't mind the movie, but I just don't like them dolls in real life, bro. Like, I ain't really hanging around people that had them dolls. Bro. I, ain't, I ain't like them dolls at all, bro. It just creeped me out, bro. Ever since I was a kid. Let's get back into it, though. Mr. Easton, what is this? It's a game. The gold standard of torture movies, the Saw franchise dominated the horror genre in the mid 2000s with its gruesome traps and graphic kills. And that's my way. I brought proof. But with a new film coming out every year, the series started to get old quickly, and the traps didn't seem as novel going four or five movies in. 
But in steps Saw 6, which was a scathing critique of the American health insurance industry, with one of the main stories about a health insurance executive that was put through one of Jigsaw's cruel tests. You must let go of one to save the life of the other. As you can see, the choice is not so clear when you are face to face with the people whose blood will stain your hands. Saw 6 is often considered the best film since Saw 2, and it proved that the franchise wasn't completely out of ideas. At least, not yet. There's no outrunning 5G, and it's rolling out as we speak. Instead of trying to beat it, I think we need to transcend it. So the term moonshot is a term for our time, and coordinating together, we've got all the best tools that we've ever had as a species. This is actually a perfect opportunity for us to wake up. Whereas we think of astral projection, now it has to do with more complex and subtle levels of psychic awareness. It's amazing to talk to those on the other side and to get their stories and to learn what their heaven is like. They call these three motherships in Antarctica that the militaries term Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. Are you an extraterrestrial? That's a very good question. I've taken many different forms on many different planets. Many different heads on many different planets too. Wait a minute. <laughs> when is the last time that a verified million dollar trader has ever offered to help you? Get out of here. Number seven, Final Destination 5. See, I knew it. I knew it was going to have a Final Destination on here. I raised my case. I knew I was right. I have. The fun part of the Final Destination movies was watching the different ways that death would claim its victims with intricate Rube Goldberg-like steps. I just, I don't want to miss anything. But similar to the Saw movies, the Final Destination series had trouble coming up with ways to keep this premise fresh. However, Final Destination 5 was able to come up with memorable deaths such as the gymnastic scene and the eye surgery scene. Plus, the twist at the end was a nice way of bringing the series back to where it started. What's all that about? I have no idea. Number six, Annabelle Creation. What do you need? Your soul. Bitch, what the fuck? The cursed doll made a. Gotta get the fuck out. The bitch came around like, bitch, I want everything. Uh, bitch, you gonna have to go on with that bullshit. Buki first impression in The Conjuring, which made things look promising when she got her own film in 2014. Unfortunately, that oh. film wasn't well received with critics or audiences. There has to be another way. <laughs> there is. I can make it right. However, Annabelle Creation came out three years later and was the type of movie we were expecting. A prequel to the original film, Annabelle Creation gives a tragic backstory to the doll and explains with greater depth how it came to be cursed. We said yes. There's a certain movies I could watch. And uh, certain movies, I'm just like, hell no. Nah. Only, only way I'll watch that is I'm from the girl and I'm booed up, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you color and she's like, baby, I'm scared. Hold on tight, hold on tight, closer, closer. But by myself, hell no, I ain't watching a movie like that by myself, hell no. I watch that with some fam, friends, or a girl. But not by myself. It's just certain movies I don't watch by myself. And these type of horror movies are just too creepy for me. And that's when it became stronger. Actress Lulu Wilson was in both Annabelle Creation and the Ouija prequel, which shows that she was someone to cast if you wanted to make a prequel that was an improvement over the original. Number five, Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. Darren, we better turn around. Why? Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. Friday the 13th is one franchise that isn't afraid to go in different directions, but part five might have gone too far with giving us a different killer to continue the series other than Jason Voorhees. <laughs> Luckily, part six remedies this mistake by bringing back Jason, wasting no time by resurrecting him in the opening scene. Jason Lives does have humor that sends up the franchise with a lighthearted touch, but thankfully, the franchise did not continue in this direction beating a dead horse like Nightmare on Elm Street did with Freddy. But we'll get to that later. Yaka. 
Number four, the X- I remember when that came out, bro. I gotta rewatch that. Who won that one? I think it was Jason. No, it was Freddy. I think won that one. I think. Yeah. That's crazy. Exorcist three. Enter night. This time you're going to lose. The original Exorcist is one of the scariest films of all time, and Exorcist 2 is anything but. Hey, bring her back! Luckily, almost 13 years after the disappointing follow-up, The Exorcist 3 came to save the day and restore the good name of the franchise. Based on the novel Legion by Exorcist author William Peter Blatty, Exorcist 3 focuses on Lieutenant Kinderman, a character from the original film. Honestly, they didn't even know they had sequels, honestly. Exorcist 1 was the best one of all, so that's just my opinion. That was the only one I saw. Investigating murders committed by the Gemini killer. The film has got one of the most memorable jump scares in horror and great performances by George C. Scott and Brad Dourif. And on and on. He is inside with us. He will never get away. Number three, Scream 4. Released 11 years after the original trilogy had ended, Scream 4 was a commentary on horror movies. Scream that name. Ghostface Killer. In a trailer. Face go Philly. The family's in the back. And they twisting the book. Get silly. Hey, get silly. Yo. I, I don't know. I, I put my Scream mask somewhere, but it's, it's Ghostface. Ghostface, my one of my favorite uh, horror movie uh characters as far as the, the design and stuff. He's just like just easy to get into character with. I mean, I mess with him. One of my favorite uh character designs for horror character. Yes, sir. All day. Movies that had come out since Scream Three. Oh my God, I love it. I've seen it five times and it still gets me every time. You're kidding. I don't get it. It was also a commentary on horror reboots, acting as some sort of cross between a sequel and a reboot. One of the strengths of the sequel was fun characters, such as Kirby, played by Hayden Panettiere, and Jill, played by Emma Roberts. I need fans. Don't you get it? This has never been about killing you. It's about becoming you. We didn't know we needed the film, but it was an improvement over Scream 3 and a nice chance to see Sidney, Dewey, and Gale again. Dewey! Hey! Listen. I don't want anybody else. Gil, you mean it. Number two, Halloween. Have you ever really? This was the best horror movie remake of all, bro. Me and my me and my mom went to go see this back back two years ago, buddy. Best. It just was sauce on type of sauce. That just was the best. They liked a girl and you just couldn't have her. If this ain't number one, then I wonder what it is. I'm I'm sorry, man. I'll just I'll piece out of your hair. For years, the Halloween franchise had been a horrific mess with sequels that kept sinking to new lows. Whether it was Paul Rudd playing Tommy Doyle in Halloween 6, or Busta Rhymes roundhouse kicking Michael Myers in Resurrection, or those Rob Zombie movies. <laughs> Then Halloween 2018 came along, and all it had to do was pretend that all the sequels following the original Halloween never happened. Directed by Pineapple Express filmmaker David Gordon Green and co-written by Green with frequent collaborator Danny McBride, the movie paid off, giving the franchise a terrifying fresh start. Horror fans are eagerly anticipating upcoming sequels Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. Probably the first time in a long time, Halloween fans are optimistic about the series' future. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you- uh, Was that a spoiler? I don't remember that part of the movie, but I- the upcoming trailer for that new film is going to be fire, though, ain't it? Yeah, I can't wait to see that new Halloween next year. You go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Wes Craven's new nightmare. Don't miss me. Perhaps no horror movie character was hurt by sequels more than Freddy Krueger. While Dream Warriors was a step up from Freddy's Revenge, he was cracking jokes every chance he got by Dream Child and Freddy's Dead, 
and no one could take him seriously anymore. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little soul, too. <laughs> That's a shame for such a sinister figure. That all changed when Wes Craven came back to the A Nightmare on Elm Street franchise to direct a movie where Freddy was the menacing figure Craven originally intended him to be. Hey, Dylan. Ever played in the cat? New Nightmare gave Freddy the respect he deserves as a horror icon. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo. And I haven't seen a Freddy Krueger movie since I was like little, so I have little knowledge of the films. I don't know about his character and what he's capable of and what he does, but I don't remember any of the films at all. I don't even think I watched all the films. I probably saw like one or two. I saw more Jason movies than I have Freddy movies. Eventually, I'll go back and watch all the sequels and stuff, but that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to see where they placed the Halloween recent one that I had seen. I was surprised I didn't put the It one on here. The It one was really freaking good. The remake for It, y'all slipping, bro. Y'all really slipping. Y'all should have put the remake on It for this one. It and It 2. Those were top notch from the last two years. And I'm surprised I didn't put that on there. Hopefully they do another set of these top 10 horror movie sequels that save the franchise. But if not, to say the least, y'all could have scratched one of these films and put in uh, uh, the It one. Because the Chucky film was alright. Y'all could have scratched that Chucky's remake and put in this It one. Or what? Or even the Exorcist one, y'all could have scratched out. I feel like there was some y'all could have scratched out from this top 10 and put in It. Because It was... It was it, bro. Right? Like, everybody watched the it one. But that's just my opinion. All right. Um, besides that, I, let me know what y'all favorite scary movie is or remake is. And my personal opinion, it and Halloween were my best remakes in the past three years. Hands down. Change my mind in the comment section down below. But without further ado, um, that ends today's video, man. Y'all check out some more uh, of my scary reactions. I even did some scary gameplay last year. Y'all check out that in this playlist right here. Uh, scary reactions, scary gameplay. And um, y'all make sure y'all subscribe to your boy right here. That's me, your boy, GMB Reacts. Turn on the post notifications down below. Hit that bell button. You already know what time it is. And... Um, that ends today's video. This is your boy GMB Grace, aka GMB Reacts. GMB out. Boom. Let's go. Yes, sir. For more content, stay tuned.